Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to Topic 3.3.1, Surface Area to Volume Ratio. Let's head straight to the specification. So they want us to consider the relationship between the size of an organism or structure and its surface area to volume ratio, and then the adaptations of larger organisms to maintain a rate of exchange of materials despite a smaller surface area to volume ratio. So organisms exchange substances with their environment. Generally, organisms need oxygen for aerobic respiration and also nutrients such as glucose, amino acids and fatty acids. It's also fundamental that they can remove waste products such as CO2 and urea as the buildup of these materials can be dangerous as they are toxic and can cause cells to die. In order to maintain a constant body temperature, heat needs to be exchanged too. Okay, so how easy exchange of substances is depends on its surface area to volume ratio. The amount of material an organism needs to exchange is affected by its volume, and how much it can exchange through its surface is affected by its surface area. Note that as the size of an organism or structure such as a cell increases, its volume increases at a faster rate than its surface area does, so the larger the organism, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio. So an elephant, for example, has a much smaller surface area to volume ratio than a mouse. So as the size of an organism increases, the amount of material the organism needs to exchange increases by a lot, whereas the amount of material it is able to exchange through its surface only increases by a little. And if the metabolic rate exceeds the rate of exchange of vital materials and wastes due to a too low surface area to volume ratio, then the organism will die. So let's compare single-celled organisms to larger multicellular organisms. Single-celled organisms have a very large surface area to volume ratio, and they can rely on diffusion of substances into and out of the cell to meet the needs of the organism. The rate of diffusion is fast because of the small distances the substances have to travel. Multicellular organisms, on the other hand, cannot rely on diffusion of substances through their surfaces to meet the needs of the organism. The surface area to volume ratio is too low, meaning that the organism cannot exchange enough substances to meet the needs of a relatively large organism through a relatively small outer surface. And furthermore, the diffusion distances are too great. Therefore, larger organisms have evolved exchange surfaces and transport systems which have features such as a large surface area, a good blood supply to maintain a favourable concentration gradient for the diffusion of substances, a thin membrane, and also ventilation in some organisms such as humans, for example. All of this maintains a high rate of transport of substances into and out of the organism. The rate of heat loss is another thing which is affected by surface area to volume ratio. If an organism has a large surface area to volume ratio, take a mouse for example, more heat is lost to the surroundings. Therefore, the metabolic rate of the organism has to increase to release enough heat energy from aerobic respiration to stay warm. On the other hand, animals in hot environments may have adaptations to increase their surface area to lose more heat to stay cool. Elephants, for example, do not have sweat glands and therefore have large ears with a large surface area to release more heat energy to the surroundings to help regulate their body temperature. Great, so now we've had a look at the relationship between the size of an organism and its surface area to volume ratio. So we can tick that off. And we've also had a look at some of the adaptations of organisms in relation to problems caused by having either a very high or a very low surface area to volume ratio. And that would be surface area to volume ratio. Thanks for watching Spec Transfer. Next time we'll be looking at gas exchange.